Greetings, and bienvenue, mine crew. Thank you for returning to this broadcast. And welcome to new viewers joining us for the first time. If you like a video, then feel free to subscribe. How can we stop alien abductions and fight aliens? I've read a fair amount on alien abductions from David M. Jacobs and watched several archived lectures and documentaries. The situation to me is that aliens, if they truly are ETs, are hostile and have malicious intentions for humans, with abductions being a common form of aggression. This leaves an obvious question. How do we fight them? For abductions, some people have reported that prayers have saved them, while others say they have done nothing. I remember watching a lecture from a female researcher, maybe Carla something, who mentioned an anecdote where aliens were harmed by someone imagining a bomb going off, but she didn't mention any more details in that lecture. One of the most apparent things about abductions is how the aliens paralyze their victims. We need some way to prevent that. I vaguely heard some theories that the aliens are somehow taking people to a slightly different dimension to ours, which is why we have some physical evidence but few outside witnesses. I think it might have been called the Oz Effect. I remember reading on Wikipedia that Jacques Vallée apparently thinks the UFOs attacked with microwaves in Colares, Brazil, but I don't have more info on that. I've heard contradictory reports as to whether guns work. In some reports, aliens somehow stop the guns from firing, while in others, they die just fine. I think a documentary by Richard D. Hall mentions guns working. Guns only partly work from what I've heard of the attacks in Peru. Thoughts? I've had a few abduction-type experiences. In mine, I wake up in the middle of the night, usually with one of them on top of me, holding me down. Like you would if somebody was laying down and was trying to get up. You'd lay your body over them and hold them down or push them back down. That's what it feels like. The weight feels like maybe a 60-pound kid is trying to hold me down. I think I come sometimes when I'm not supposed to, and they try to hold me down until I go back to sleep. It probably works most of the time and I don't even remember it happened. Other times it doesn't work. I end up struggling with them and they send me back. I always fight them. When I wake up I'm absolutely exhausted and all I want to do is go back to sleep. It's like when somebody wakes you up in the morning and all you want to do is tell them to fuck off and go back to sleep. It almost hurts to wake up if you know that feeling. I feel like that. It should be the total opposite, but it isn't. I have this thing on me. I should be totally awake and panicking in like a half second. But I don't. It's like I know who they are and what they're doing. All I want is for them to get off me. I don't really care what they're doing other than that. They do have control over me. But I can break it and wake up if I try. I don't know if they will take me anywhere. It seems like I never left my bed but I know that can't be right. It's almost like I'm in two places at the same time. I'm there and they're doing things. But I'm also back home in bed. I never feel like I ever left it, it's hard to explain. Anyway, I have a problem waking up to an alarm clock unless it's right next to my head. I don't hear it, so I sleep with mine right next to my pillow. When they come, I always know it because my clock gains two or three minutes. It goes two or three minutes fast. Not over time, like in one night. I think there is some field around me that causes clocks to malfunction or it's some field that warps time or something. I think they throw it around you and it's very small, just big enough to surround your body, plus a little bit. If the clock is close enough, it winds up in the field or whatever it is. That's why I think mine goes all funky. But it's not reported by others. Everybody else keeps theirs on the nightstand, or a desk, or dresser, or something. Not close enough to be part of the effect. For people who suspect they might be the victim of abductions but aren't sure, I suggest putting a clock on the bed as close to them as possible. My alarm clocks never last very long. I admit I buy cheap ones, but they never last longer than about three or four years before they're broken and don't work at all anymore. The batteries burn out really fast, and then eventually they stop working. The readouts get faded so you can't even see the numbers. Mechanical ones don't do any better. Clocks have a really hard time with these fields or whatever it is. Very interesting information. Thank you for sharing. I wonder if it could be electromagnetic interference. 
That could mess up batteries and electronics and potentially mechanical clocks if they're made of steel. But it seems very unusual that they would all be distorted by the same time since they function with different mechanisms. I've heard the idea that ETs cause electromagnetic interference before, but I don't think all kinds of timekeeping would be distorted the same. Perhaps it is time that's being distorted then. Maybe time itself. The clock thing is legit though. It took me a long time to make the connection. Over a period of six months or so, my clock would be off by a half an hour. I'd reset it. It would be good for a few weeks, then all of a sudden one morning I'd wake up one morning and it would be two or three minutes off. Then stay that way for a week or two, then do it again. And now it's four or five minutes off. I think they stopped. It's been two or three years now since it happened the last time. Maybe that was the time they gave up on me. I woke up with the thing on top of me as usual. Most of the time I never opened my eyes. I never wanted to, or maybe they had told me not to. This time I did. I was laying on my left side and I reached my right arm around behind me and grabbed it right about where its neck met its shoulder, kind of half on both. I squeezed my hand as hard as I could and my fingers sunk in like I was squeezing a Nerf ball. That's kind of what it felt like. I didn't break the skin or anything, but my fingers sunk in. They're kind of soft and mushy. The thing said to me, you're squeezing your own neck. I thought to myself, no I'm not. But it kind of threw me for a loop enough to make me stop. It wasn't an audible voice. It was exactly like the classic abductee experience. Like it spoke to me with my own thoughts. Like telepathy or something. That's when I opened my eyes, and I saw its arm draped over me and hanging past the edge of my body. I saw it from about the mid-upper arm to the hand. It was gray and thin and had wrinkles just below the elbow. The hand I don't really remember. I think it had long fingers. I only got a quick look at it. I didn't stare at it for very long or anything. I grabbed it with my left hand about at the wrist and bent it like you would if you were trying to break off a tree branch or something if you can picture it. Its arm bent 90 degrees like nothing. I bent it right over like it was made out of rubber or something. I don't think they have bones. It's something more like cartilage. I did that and it ended immediately. It was like the thing just vanished into thin air and I was laying in bed. I think I really hurt the thing that time and maybe they decided they had enough of me. I think the average human male would probably utterly beat the shit out of your average gray. They weigh like nothing. If one punched you, it would be like getting hit with a volleyball, maybe. With no real solid bones in his arm, he couldn't hurt you punching you. If these things couldn't control us somehow mentally, or however they do it, they wouldn't stand a chance against us. But I think even that spell or whatever they have us under can be broken, if you want to break it. I just started fighting. I'm exhausted, I can barely move. I don't even want to move, really. But once I get going, the spell wears off quickly. If I can get to the point that I become conscious. Most times I don't think I ever did. I went there or whatever and they did whatever they wanted and I don't remember it happening. The clock going haywire was the only clue most of the time that anything had happened. Just a guess. I was probably with them 40 or 50 times. I only remember five of them. And even then only just a few cloudy minutes at most. Sitting up in bed at 3 a.m., not feeling tired, thinking about things, feeling content. A strange sensation hits me. Everything looks the same but different somehow. I feel this uncontrollable dread fill my very being. I cannot move. Heart is racing. Closet door opens. A black mist takes the shape of two large dark eyes. I panic even more. I cannot feel anything. Use willpower alone to lunge into the closet. I see a strange humanoid looking creature staring emotionless at me. In total disbelief I can now see it looks like a stereotypical pop culture alien. I wrap my hands around its neck. It's useless. I cannot even feel my hands. All of the sudden I'm back in my bed, sitting up as I was before. It sounds like an alien abduction but I have a theory. Being interested in aliens I'd research everything about the subject. Being interested in the occult back then, I'd draw many old symbols, combine them, and make some of my own sometimes even within drawings of ancient gods. I think that I accidentally called out something and it took on a form it could use to help instill fear. Even stranger yet, I'd have similar experiences years later with things that looked like people, lights, or just strange disfigured humanoid things, usually in dreams but sometimes not. 
Just thought I'd share the story here to give you something else to read. With all the LARPing and meme threads going on here, I've been reluctant to share even though this is the board for such stories. My experience, all comments are welcome. It's 1995 and I'm seven years old. Dad got orders to move to Hawaii. Want to visit family in Pennsylvania before moving, living in Virginia. Arrive at grandmother's at 12 or 2 a.m., I got out of our van and noticed a light in the sky with brighter lights which revolved around the craft. Pointed at it and asked my dad what it was. Grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle, mom, dad, me and my brother are now looking at it. Without drawing it myself, this is the best gray pic I could find which closely depicts what I saw. Family is perplexed by what we see. Uncle is so curious he grabs a rifle to look at the UFO through the scope. Failing to make any sense of it, he hands the gun to my dad, who too can't make sense of it. Eventually the ship vanishes out of nowhere. No sound made during the whole ordeal. Everyone but me is tired, and we all head inside. Hook up SNES and start playing Super Mario World. Kept getting my ass handed to me by Bowser when he dropped that big ass ball down. Give up and decide to go to sleep. Get on the couch in the living room. Note, curtains and blinds are open because family was looking outside for our arrival. Nobody else is sleeping in the living room except for me. Don't know why I wasn't scared to sleep alone next to a huge window after such a sighting. Fall asleep. Wake up sometime shortly after. Realize I can't move anything except for my eyes and am able to move my mouth, but can't barely make a sound. Started trying to scream for my dad, but it was the faintest whisper. I could see everything around me, it seemed as though I was still in the living room. However, it was like my mind was in two places at once. In the other place, I was trying to get away from these entities, but that's pretty much all I remember of it, besides the fact that when I felt safe, they found me. I don't remember what they looked like at all during this experience, or even the environment I was in. Just the knowledge I just entailed of my attempted and futile escape. Eventually paralysis wore off and I was able to scream for my dad, who came to me and assured me that it was just a nightmare. Eventually go back to sleep after staying up alone for a while. Fast forward a few years, probably around 1998 while in Hawaii. Fall asleep next to my bedroom window, blinds are open. Same experience happens again, so I'll spare the details. Very next day my dad has staff duty, working the night shift, and my parents are separated. Mom has visitation rights so comes to visit and watch us while he's working, listening to the band Corn while my brother is sleeping on the bottom bunk of our bunk bed. He's all the way against the wall, looks uncomfortable but whatever. Mom asked me to turn down my music, so I agree. Plug headphones into the stereo system. As I brought the headphones to my ears, I heard creepy deep breathing. I looked over at my brother, first thing, wondering if he's okay. But as I'm looking at him, I realize that the rise and fall of his breathing doesn't match the noise that I'm hearing. Window blinds are still open, dumb. And that's when I noticed something was at my window in my peripheral vision as I looked at my brother. I finally got brave enough to look at my window, and that's when I saw something staring through my window that looked much like the pic I supplied for this thread. I couldn't see its nose or mouth area well, because there were lights behind it, but I could clearly see the sides of its eyes. Felt so scared. Very menacing, sinister fright. Felt like it was getting closer and closer. Only way to explain the fear. Closed my eyes and shook my head, hoping that it would disappear when I opened my eyes. Nope, still there. Scream while leaving my room in a panic and go to my sister's room where my mom typically stayed when visiting. Tell her mom, there's something at my window. My mom was reading the Bible, so she closed it and got up to go in my room with me. I enter first, and she follows me. It's still there, and I'm not taking my eyes off of it. My mom starts crying and praying and gets down on her knees, saying, I rebuke you, Satan. I cast you away from me in Jesus' name. I pray, amen. Doesn't do a damn thing. She tells me to turn it on to the Benny Hen, televangelist, show, 700 Club, or whatever. I turn the TV on and get to the channel, hoping like hell that it would work. Atheist at the time, still an atheist. It doesn't do a damn thing. After about the same amount of time that I guessed I felt paralyzed each time before, 10 or 15 minutes, it just vanishes, as if it teleported or turned on a cloaking device. To this day, I wonder what it was that I saw. Was it real? 
Was I abducted? I've recently started to think about this more. Okay, I shall share my story. Might be a UFO, might not be. Definitely not abducted, though. About a year or two ago, a buddy of mine had just gotten back from a big festival, so he was of course loaded to the gills with going-away gifts from said event. I'm less inclined to those, but I do enjoy a good joyride to smoke a cigarette or two. So, we're driving around in the middle of a town near some train tracks, when Buddy says, Hang on, got to stop to see a friend. He hops out of the car, does some business, hops back in. It's around now, he informs me, he'd been still getting serious tracers, and what do you call them from the boatloads of drools he was doing all last week? I'm like, OK, just drive safe. We take off and are tooling around for half an hour, around 1am, when all of a sudden, above some power lines, I see a giant greenish glow in the clouds suddenly seem to move. I mean, it was distinctly there, but you couldn't really see anything except a glow and then the clouds moving. I'm peering at this spot for like five seconds after it happens, and Buddy suddenly slows the car and goes, Dude, am I tripping, or did a giant green thing go shooting off in the, the sky there? Later check the news to find out a rich community in the area, and a on-duty police officer, had made 911 calls to report a green whale-sized object falling into the lake. Be me 16. Lying in bed asleep. Suddenly wake up as if from a nightmare. Don't recall the dream. Watch Family Guy on TV. I keep my TV on and dimmed in case I have a ridiculous nightmare. Childish, I know. Realize my bedroom door is open. I know I closed it, as I do every night. I get mad because I think my folks have been in my room. Suddenly I realize there are three beings standing in my doorway. What the actual hell dot avi, I assume it's sleep paralysis. I wiggle my toes and fingers. They are still there staring at me. I raise up with the vehement force of a titanium gorilla. This is not happening dot gif. The one in the middle walks into my room, vague memory of bright light. Wake up, and it's morning. OP here. I had quite a few events leading up to the one in my room. I had a friend who saw these things before they came to me. I was a witness to several events at his house and other places. I have audio recordings he captured. I may or may not post them, though. OP again. Be me, still 16. Wake up in the night, arid as the Gobi Desert. Get up and walk to the kitchen for a drink. Overhear little stepbrother crying and talking. Start listening in on what he's saying. He's telling the folks that he saw something and describes what to me sounds like the aliens I've been seeing. I figured one might still be lurking around or something. Start searching around the house in the dark. Have a feeling there's something behind the huge plasma in the living room. Creep up to it to see. As I look over the edge, I see what looks like a gray alien. But it's sort of blue. It's just looking at me. I decided to fight the overwhelming fear I'm feeling. I ask why it doesn't just disappear. I walk back to bed and go to sleep. I have no idea why I reacted the way I did, but I saw that thing from a foot's distance. OP once more. I'll share a story from one of my friends involving reptilians. Be him smoking a cig in his backyard since he wasn't allowed to smoke in the house, chilling to the max. Suddenly, these huge hands grab his shoulders and push him down into his chair. Two reptilians walk out in front of him with the third still holding him down. He pisses himself, literally. One tells him to pull out his phone. He notices their lips don't move when they speak. He pulls out his phone and starts crying. He was a grown man. They tell him to record the audio of what's happening. He presses record and hears nothing. Sees a lot of images of space and destruction instead. Drops his phone because he's shaking with fear. They disappear. At this point, he calls me crying and tells me what happened. I thought this dude was fucking losing his shit. He sends me the audio, and it's got these creepy-ass sounds. He didn't have a computer, either BTW. So the next day, I got his ass up to my place so I could keep an eye on him. I was afraid he might hurt himself or whatever. He shows me these huge bruises on his shoulders where he claims one held him down. There were several witnesses to what was going on with him, and it was clearly not a hoax at all. Absolutely the most terrifying experiences of my life involve him and his unwanted guests. Forgot the link like a goddamn idiot.
deployed in Afghanistan, walking in a desert. It's dusk. Hear a loud boom. We all book it to the nearest cover. Call it in the radio. No firefights in the area were reported. No IED guys in the locations. No one on base is missing. We're told to go check it out. We were right outside of a small village. Forget the name. Go to where the boom was. Nothing around is really damaged. Go around asking locals what it was. They all heard it but didn't see anything, of course. Farmer-looking dude is yelling at us as we're still searching around. Tells us in broken English he saw a really bright light in his field. He ran outside. It was gone. Literally a huge black spot with burned crops all around. All his goats are gone. We go kicking in some doors, searching for bombs, IEDs, etc. Nothing. I am actually seeing a psychologist at the moment for something that happened to me during the summer. Okay, I will say this is legit, so if you have nothing nice to say, please don't insult. This has caused me some shit. I've been sober from a hard drug for over two years now, and during the fall was my two-year anniversary, and me and my brother would always go hunting before my addiction, so we decided to go to celebrate. It was in northern Ontario. I'd rather be completely anon, so that's all I'm giving you. So we meet each other at our old hunting ground setup site and next split up into two groups to go in and have a better chance of coming out heavy. So I got out to this hill that goes down into a clearing that has a small stream where there used to be a lot of deer there. I leaned up against a tree for about an hour before finally a deer came, around 7.30 a.m. It was on the hill at the same height, so I aimed my bow and shot it just behind the legs. It ran down the hill and dropped near the creek. I sat and made sure it didn't move, got up and went to it. As I was walking down the hill, my spine was vibrating like crazy. I thought I was having withdrawals, but it was completely different. I got up to the deer when I heard a high pinging noise and I looked up and blacked out for a second. When I came to, I looked around and nothing, then turned to the deer and it was completely eaten. Huge bite marks and maggots everywhere. At first I thought it may have been another deer if it wasn't for my arrow sticking out of it. Made my way back to camp completely confused, with my brother standing there with two Mounties. When they noticed me, my brother instantly grabbed me, asking me where have I been. I told him I was by the hill and came back when I couldn't find it, didn't say what happened. He told me I was gone for 24 hours. So that's why they have the officers there, they have some missing person time limit. We ended up packing and leaving before I was forced due to my experiences to take blood tests for some drugs that had nothing in my system, obviously. But while we were waiting for the results, I kept having intense, vivid dreams of what happened, which has brought me to my experiences with the psychologist. It has helped a little. He tried to do hypnotism, but it didn't work. She said when I went under, I just sat up and stared at her until she got me out of it. So it is a working process. Came back from psych about an hour ago, noticed this was still up, so I thought I'd fill it on a little more. So she brought a guy in to do another hypnotism. He is supposed to be really good. I went under like I usually do and never remember what is happening. When I woke, they both kind of just stared at me and explained that when I walked down the hill, I was hearing voices, which I don't remember. As I got to the deer, the voices got louder, telling me to relax, and when I turned to look around, there was a bright object illuminating red. They told me that I was about to describe the inside, but I did the same thing as last time. I just sat up and stared blank at both of them until they got me out of it. They said they're going move appointments around, try to get me in as soon as possible. My vivid dreams are still happening, though. I keep seeing like myself at different times hunting deer, then hearing the voices so trippy. Watching some videos on YouTube, put my computer on standby, and went to bed, 3 a.m. Fell asleep pretty quick. Woke up later, sleep paralysis, wiggled my toes, eventually my whole body. Huh. Weird. Fall asleep again. Wake up again. Hear the video I was just watching. Sleep paralysis again. Work on breaking the paralysis like I had earlier. Can't. Fall asleep again. Wake up. Major light coming through the window facing the neighbor's yard. Can move only my head toward the window. Don't remember falling asleep. Wake up. Check the clock. 335. 
Not too sure if it was an alien experience, but the bright light towards the end made me think it was. Neighbors don't remember anything. The light was strong enough to be seen through some blackout curtains. This fucker was in my closet twice. In 2003 or 2004, I didn't have glasses on, but my vision wasn't really that blurry at the time. One night, both my parents were in the basement. I was up on the second floor playing GameCube. My parents called me down for something, and me being a fifth grader at the time was also traumatized from an alien abduction documentary I watched in 2002. Well, as I'm making my way downstairs, I check all the rooms for aliens. I look in the closet, and as I start to squint and my vision gets clearer, I see pick related almost identical, just the head too. Everything else was blacked out. I noped the fuck out of there and jumped from the second floor to the first, pissed my parents off because they heard a crash. I told them it was nothing, and they just carried on annoyed. A few weeks later, I told my brother about it. I can't remember what time it was, probably late at 10 p.m. We went to go check and I saw it. I saw it again and said, I see it, come look. I was less frightened because I wasn't alone this time. I opened up the closet all the way and checked to see the spot where I saw the alien body. It was gone. Just some pillows on the ground with some wrapping paper. I shuffled them around, shut the closet halfway, and went to check from the same angle again if I could see the gray. There was none. I always just brush this event aside as an optical illusion until recently, since it sounds like alien encounters are always this foggy and trippy. I hope that you enjoyed tonight's broadcast. If you enjoyed tonight's story, then please subscribe to the channel as more green texts will appear daily. A new broadcast will appear when the clock strikes. Midnight Central Time. Remember to check the Odyssey and Rumble pages for separate archives of previous broadcasts.